Right. So welcome to yet another virtual learning session. Um, today we are looking at, uh, in this first session for the new year, 2023. So uh, we are looking at, I did this earlier, but anyway, uh, let me wish all of you guys a very happy and uh, educationally successful new year. So let's make sure this uh, uh, year we get everything done as we discussed. So um, now let's get into the lesson. So we are in uh, the mid, mid of our discussion on economic systems. So uh, we have to start today's session or this particular session with um, uh, in page 48, 49 where we are evaluating uh, the two main economic systems that we talk about, market economic system and a command economic system, right? So last time we did the class, we have looked at the main advantages or sort of main limitations of a market economic system. So I'm going to quickly go through those points and then we are going to look at the advantages of a market economic system. And then we are going to focus on the uh, advantages and the limitations of a command economic system, right? There's an easy way to uh, study and remember these things also. So I'll share that with you guys as we get into the lesson, right? Okay, good. So um, here we go. So I've shared the slides with you. You guys can hopefully see the slides now. Uh, I would like to quickly get into the, um, uh, the study material a bit. Yep, study material a bit also. I think that's important to do so. Right. So uh, in terms of the study material, right, um, we are in uh, page number 48, 49. Okay. Right. So uh, we have completed the work here, but I just want to um, make a note of something which I think is uh, a bit useful. So I'll use the slides for that. And um, right, just just to quickly recap something. That's it, and then we'll look at the uh, relevant area. Right. So um, so these are things we have basically covered a uh, long time back. I mean, few classes uh, previously. Right. Here we go. Principal disadvantages or reasons for market failure. Now, um, I just want you guys to quickly read this one, one time and then uh, I'll do a quick recap and we'll move on to the area, right? Okay. Right. Um, okay. Sorry, but I just wanted to set up the device. Okay. Now, um, let's see. Uh, first thing is, we are looking at um, the concept of, uh, when we look at the limitations of 
a market economic system as a remember a market economic system command economic system command and market economic systems are based on right you guys remember we saw that chart early also based on mechanism of resource allocation mechanism of resource allocation uh, it's important to be clear on that when you evaluate a market economic system command economic system or when you want to identify the uh, pros and cons ad, uh, advantages and disadvantages now uh, based on the mechanism of resource allocation uh, we have market economic system and command economic system a market economic system is using something called what is the mechanism we use in the market economic system to allocate our limited or scarce resources and solve basic economic problems what is the mechanism we use we use something called the you, you guys know this yes ah, there we go i'm getting some answers we use something called the yes uh price or price mechanism price is the uh invisible hand or price is what uh does all this but the mechanism is called the price mechanism yes very good uh, then in a command economic system we use something called the planning mechanism central planning mechanism so when price mechanism which is supposed to um, allocate our scarce resources and solve basic economic problems uh, is unable to do that job in an efficient or optimum manner optimum in the best way possible when the price mechanism is unable to allocate resources and solve our basic economic problems of what to produce how to produce whom to produce then we use a special word here special term is used which is called um, right which is called let me get the highlighter on right which is called um, basically market failure it's called what failure market failure so that's a special term we use when the price mechanism is unable to do its job so this market failure happens in three main ways you guys might remember this that is what we called right the instances or situations of uh, market failure instances or situations of market failure is what we called right here what this is what we call no that color is too light uh, we called it the uh, basically the three uh, three eyes yes what are these three eyes remember what are what is this three eyes approach we called it inefficiency first, very good yes first i is for inefficiency okay um so we say in efficiency in resource allocation inefficiency in resource allocation ah brilliant i'm getting responses see very good brother three eyes inefficiency right now inefficiency um amani Shara, very good, right? You have given the absolute correct answers. Deepthi is also correct. Good, right? Inefficiency and uh, uh, the uh, student who uh, unmuted the microphone and verbally answered, very good, right? So, but the uh, inefficiency in resource are first I is inefficiency. First I is inefficiency. Uh, under inefficiency, there are four things. Yes. So uh, basically, one to four points given here point one to four is inefficiency in resource allocation so there are a few simple things we had um right uh, first thing is we had um, the public goods not being produced then merit goods being uh underproduced then demerit goods being overproduced very simple to remember public merit demerit public not produced limitation market failure we haven't allocated resources we need public goods like um, 
Remember the examples we talked about? Street lighting, national defense, maintaining law and order, protecting the environment, flood protection. These are important public goods. But private sector doesn't provide because they can't earn a profit from it. But government has to provide because it's a market failure. Merit goods, health, education. Private sector provides, but not enough and too expensive. Government has to provide. Demerit goods, demerit goods, uh, alcohol, gambling, tobacco, harmful for the society. Private sector over provides, government has to control uh, the allocation there. So demerit goods. Then barriers for competition. So we talked about monopoly markets, right? When there's monopoly markets, there is no consumer sovereignty. Consumers are exploited, right? We don't have options, only one firm, monopoly. Then um, when we don't have the proper information, imperfectness in information, there also we have issues, imperfect information, right? So all this will lead to consumer exploitation. So these are inefficiencies in resource allocation. The first main reason for market failure, easy ways to remember, first I. Second I, some of you have already given the answer. Uh, I've used the word disparities here, disparities in income, and wealth distribution. Uh, a simple English word we use for this is, we say, you get, we have given the answer. I'll just write it here. Inequalities. Inequalities in income and wealth distribution. Second I, inequalities, right? And the third I is basically macroeconomic. We say what with the in B Lity, right? Instability. Hopefully, you guys can see that. Instability. Instability, right? So, that word is, of course, here. Instability. We say macroeconomic instability. When we have problems with uh, inflation, right? When we have problems with unemployment, when we have problems with uh, exchange rate, then we have macroeconomic instability. That is also market failure. Government has to interfere. Okay? Three eyes approach, the three eyes method is very easy to remember all of this. Um, inefficiency, inequality, and instability. Inefficiency, inequality, and instability. Are we okay? Right? Right. So altogether six points, they come under three broad categories. Three broad categories. So it's an easy way to remember and a very good way to remember uh, the disadvantages or limitations of a market economic system or the price mechanism as a mechanism of resource allocation. Right. Then we move on to the principal advantages. Principal advantages. You have this in page 49. Right. You have this in page um, 49. Right. Page 49. Um, what I want you guys to do is quickly run through. Read this once. Then I will explain. Okay. Read. The points once, what are the advantages? Remember, we are looking at the, uh, basically the advantages. I'll help you uh, uh, highlight or underline the key points. Uh, we are looking at the advantages or the benefits of having a market economic system. Quickly go through once.
Done? Are we okay? Okay. Now, um, a very important technique uh, when you look at evaluating or uh, advantages, disadvantages uh, of market and command economic systems is for the any any evaluation you can use this technique now whatever the drawbacks or limitations of a market economic system will become advantages most of those points will you can in turn you can reverse them and they become advantages of a command economic system whatever the advantages or benefits of a market economic system will become the disadvantages most of those points will become disadvantages for a command economic system because this is a comparative evaluation comparative analysis we are doing we are comparing a market system and talking about so we are comparing a market system with a command economic system and figuring out the limitations and the advantages is that clear vice versa so because of that uh, once you really study the advantages and disadvantages of one of these economic systems, if you are, since you guys are smart, you will be able to, once you re read everything, you will be able to identify a common set of points. And based on those points, you can uh, answer uh, a question on either market or command advantages or disadvantages. Are you clear, Puta, on what I just said? Got it? Now, it doesn't happen at once, brother. You, you might have to put some effort. I will also explain. Then you guys will understand each point. But after that, when you study, studying, I can't do. No? Only you can do studying. I can only, uh, you can, we, we can learn in the class. But studying part, you guys will do. When you study, take time and go through these things, you will see that pattern. You will be smart to do that. Right. Okay. Uh, I asked a question earlier. Did you guys understand what I said? Remember, we are the class where we respond. Right. Okay. Good. Right. Now, um, let's get into this. Um, now, remember, but, uh, last year, I told you guys that uh, we need to uh, make sure we remember the things we learn. And I explained to you how our memory works, how our neural pathways are formed. And uh, I wanted you guys to start a small habit. It's a habit. Start a small habit. What was the habit, Buddha? Uh, we, I wanted you guys to start a very positive habit last year. Do you guys remember that? Right? What was this? Um, uh, I'll call this. Uh, sorry. Study habit that I wanted you guys to start last year. Uh, it's a memory program, right? We'll use the American word program. A memory program I wanted you to do. What was that? Yes, I'm getting some responses. Ah, very good. Yes, Ayesha, uh, Asna. Akela, very good. See, you guys are responding. Anyone else who remembers? What was this memory programming uh, uh, study habit I wanted you guys to develop? Remember? Some of you might have done it or started it already. Yes, Deepthi, very good. Very correct. Very good. Right. Yes. Basically, but I wanted you guys to start taking some. when Yes, after the class finishes, within about, um, what did we say? Two two, three hours after the class finishes, the end of the class, you prepare some short notes. I gave you three techniques to follow when you prepare these short notes. Okay, I have a point here. I'll, I'm not saying the same thing again. Um, what are the three techniques to prepare short notes? I wanted you to use three, of, three possible techniques when you prepare the short notes. And I wanted you to spend not too much time on it. Remember, Take about 20, sorry, take about 20 to 30 MTS minutes. That's it. Don't take more than that. And do this after about two, three hours after the class has finished, before you go to sleep today. Uh, quickly sit in a place, take a small um, exercise book or something, right? Divide it into 
certain uh, boxes or I mean grids, you know, you guys understand what I'm saying. If you take the page in your book, something like this, my God, that's a crooked page, right? So, you know, have uh, a division like that. You know, you write one short note here, another one here, another one here, right? Likewise, so that you have, you can, you are able to capture the many things in one page. Then it's easier psychologically when you study. Okay, uh, what are the three techniques I shared with you guys? Yes, um, uh, prepare, preparing uh, lists. Yes, uh, very good. Using the key terms, right? Especially if it's definitions, a uh, uh, list of points like this, use the key terms, just the key terms and prepare a list. That's one technique. The other one was maybe use uh, tables, you know, side by side tables, su summarized way to do it. Then finally, charts. Right, I recommended flow charts. Right, you know, flow charts. Um, very good. Yes, there we go. So, use one of these three techniques depending on the area you are trying to prepare a short note for. Look at the note, rem remind yourself what we learned and what I explained quickly, efficiently prepare short notes. When you prepare short notes, one of the key requirements is you have to number everything. You have to number everything. Now, we'll say you're preparing the short note. You already might have prepared. You're preparing the short note for the previous area we did. What was that with the, the limitations, uh, the drawbacks of a market economic system? So in that short note, when you prepare the list, right, you would say, um, number one, inefficiency, keyword inefficiency in resource allocation, under that, there are four things. Number one, and then one, two, three, four. Number. Then number two, number three. Right? So then you can see all together there are six. If not, there are three main things. Always number these things. Now, or you, uh, for another area, when you prepare the list, right? Always number the items. Now, for example, we'll say, this is just a quick example. We'll say you have prepared a list for the institutional, uh, or you have prepared the list for the institutions. You have prepared a short note for the uh, institutions in an economic system, right? Institutions operating within an economic system. Then you have listed them, right? Then you realize in that list, Buddha, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six items are there. Six components are there in the list. Yes, households. Enterprises, government, markets, labor organizations, and non-government organizations, six. Those are the institutions. Then in front of the heading you used or somewhere in a different color pen, write the number, six. Six. Get it? That's the smart thing. Because when I ask you guys to prepare short notes, that was just first part of the study technique I'm trying to share with you. It was not the, not the technique. It was just the first part of it. The memory program is the first part. Right? The, 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 sorry, in the memory program, the short note habit is the first part. There are a few other steps. I'm introducing them one by one. Right? I told you earlier, I'm here to support you with a complete thing. So first step is I wanted to do this as a habit, preparing short notes. But when you prepare short notes, now I'm telling you, number everything, everything number. And in front of the heading, put the number. How many items, how many components, how many words, number. Right Now when you say six, Buddha, what you do is, now you have six items, right? So after some time, you recall, no use, that is to make sure you remember. You recall, you think, okay, institutions, right, six. You need to remember that number. Six. I have to remember six things. Do I remember? Now you're retrieving. Retrieving. Let me repeat the word. Retrieval. You're calling it back in your mind. Right. Six. Do I remember? First one. Right. Second. Right. Third. Right. Fourth. Okay. Fifth. Can't remember. Sixth. Can't remember. Only four items. But then you know. How successful or how, what is the success rate of your recalling? How much you remember? Now you have a number for it, right? Four out of six. 
So then what you do is you go and look at the short note. Ah, right. Okay. These are the two things I forgot. Right. Now I remember. Okay, fine. Then after some time, again, you recall retrieval. Retrieval is active retrieval. You have to do. I'll teach that later. Uh, then when you recall, you go, right. Okay. Six. One, two, three. Right. Fourth one is this. Fifth one is this. You will remember. Maybe you will remember all six. Now your memory is improving. You're building. Your neural pathway is becoming stronger. Is that clear? So, prepare short notes. Make it a habit. Every day after the class finishes, uh, two, three hours later, prepare the short note. Quickly get it done. You will be efficient with it as you do it more and more. It will become a habit. Right? Uh, then, when, when you prepare the short notes, use these techniques, listing tables, charts, but number everything. Number everything. Okay? Right. Done. Okay? Right. Now, let's um, get this done. Because now, what I'm going to do is uh, highlight with you the keywords so that you pick the keyword and you put that into the list. Okay? Right. Ladies and uh, gentlemen. Do we have gentlemen? Right. Um, here we go. Price mechanism, the mechanism used in a market economic system, price mechanism is relatively efficient. So the point is, it's relatively efficient. Why do we use the word relatively? Compared with the planning system in a command economy, the price mechanism is definitely more efficient as a method of resource allocation because it's very responsive. It, it, it's very flexible. When the market situation changes, demand supply changes, Price mechanism will quickly change. It will give very real-time information is given. Then through that, you can get the incentive and make your rationing decisions. Price mechanism is much more efficient as a method of resource allocation than the planning mechanism because the planning mechanism is very inflexible. Plans don't change quickly. So then you make inefficient decisions and resource allocation becomes inefficient. Of course, Buddha, earlier we learned there are many limitations of the market system uh, based on uh, resource allocation inefficiency but, and other reasons like instability and inequality. If those problems can be solved, if those problems are not there, definitely the price mechanism is more efficient. So the key point is relative efficiency as a what? Method of resource allocation. Price mechanism is relatively efficient. So... If you just remember relative efficient, relatively efficient is also enough. Uh, but what is relatively efficient? Price mechanism. Price mechanism, relatively efficient. You know, when you hear price mechanism, what is the next thing that comes to your mind? Price mechanism is one of the mechanism for resource allocation. Get it? Right. And then price mechanism has three functions. We have learned those earlier. Information function, incentive function, rationing function. Can you, can you see what I did there? Three. The number. And I recall. Okay. Right. Then number two. The ability to make consumption and production decisions in a decentralized manner. So decentralized decision making. Decentralized decision making is the key point. Uh, and the decisions can be made based on what interest? Self-interest. The ability to make decisions based on self-interest. Decentralized decision making. Now this particular point, how I would write or remember is, I would say decision making is decentralized or you can make decisions based on your own self-interest. What is benefit? What is the, what is going to give you the greatest benefit? And then I'm going to say, right, then I'm going to say, uh, maybe within brackets, i.e., right, freedom of enterprise and freedom of choice. So I'm going to bring those two words also. Freedom of choice, freedom of enterprise. If you are in a system where decision making is decentralized, where everyone can make decisions based on their own self-interest, automatically Buddha, we have freedom of enterprise and freedom of choice. Freedom of enterprise. Businesses can, as long as, because private property ownership, private sector owns land capital resources, they have the entrepreneurship and they can uh, employ the labor they need. Yes? 
whatever, as long as it's not illegal, they can produce whatever the good or service they wish to. That's called freedom of enterprise and freedom of choice. Freedom of enterprise is that whatever you can produce, whatever you want to produce, private sector enterprises have the freedom to produce. And as consumers, we have the freedom to, uh, based on our preference, based on our self-interest, we can buy whatever we want. Get it? Freedom of choice. And uh, even uh, now, in the if you're trying to do a job, if you're trying to provide labor, putta, you have the freedom of choice to select what kind of a job you want to do, what kind of profession you want to do. If you're trying to get some higher education, you have the freedom to choose. Right? In a market economy, that, that freedom, decentralization of decision-making, uh, ability, this, ability to make decisions based on self-interest, these are huge advantages. Right? Huge advantages. Right. So that's why, uh, that is what I've given as the alternative points uh, put both together. Right? So what are the keywords that you include here that you remember? Okay. Um, now, when you prepare a list, when you have more than one word, Putra, what do you do? I mean, more than uh, several phrases are there, several terms are there. You can go with commas. Right? Or you can be smart about this and you can say decentralized decision making. Under that, you can have three words. What are the three words? Uh, uh, three things under decentralized decision making. What are the three things? First, you can say um, self-interest. So that point is captured. Decentralized decision making means you can make decisions based on your self-interest. Then uh, freedom of enterprise, freedom of choice. Three things. Right. Then uh, next point, the efficiency of the mark economy is, I'm looking at the third point, efficiency of the economy is further improved with highly effective and powerful. Highly effective and powerful. Highly effective and powerful incentive. What is the incentive? This is so powerful. Profits. Profits is a huge motivator. Because profit is self-interest based. Profit is for you. You benefit when you earn more profit. So now that's what we. That is why we see with the uh, employees in a state-owned enterprise, government enterprise, government corporation, and employees who are working in a private sector enterprise. One big difference sometimes you see is right. One big big difference you see is um, that that you know the productivity, the efficiency. Uh, the private sector employees have is not there in the public sector, government sector. Government sector employees or the uh, organization tends to be a bit ineff much inefficient compared to the private sector. Why is that? Sometimes the work that is done by one person in the private sector, there are about three people to do that work in the public sector. Only three people are able to do that work. Why is that? Because in the private sector, employees are motivated by self-interest. The harder you work, the more you work, uh, you will be recognized, you will be getting promotions uh, more more quickly. Right? It's always performance-based in, in private sector because to earn profits, you have to be efficient. To earn profits, you have to minimize cost. To earn profits, you have to maximize revenue. So to do all this, you have to be efficient. So each employee has that in their mind. And if they work hard, if all the employees in that department work hard, in that unit work hard in a private sector company, the company will make more profits. The more profits a company makes, you also get benefited because you get a better bonus, bigger bonus. Get it? And a salary increment. So when you work hard, there's a benefit coming your way. There's a profit for you also. So that is a motivator. But in the public sector, they work for common, uh, common benefit, social welfare, how, whether you work hard or whether you work efficiently or inefficiently, whether you work with that passion or commitment or not, anyway, your salary is the same. Anyway, your benefits are the same. So there is no motivator. Profits, self-interest are very powerful motivators. Okay? So uh, you can say very powerful, effective incentive. And that is profits. That's an uh, advantage. Then finally, the market system in principle is able to create a more conductive environment. If you don't, if you're confused about conductive environment, that means it's able to create a 
uh, it's able to create a favorable environment, favorable environment uh, to achieve relatively high rates of economic growth, to achieve relatively high rates of economic growth. So normally there is more economic, high rates of economic growth in a uh, market economic system compared with the command economic system. I would like for you to write one more point. I want you to add one more point. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Um, one more point I want you guys to add. Um, that is. High levels of innovation and you can say superior or better. Okay. Uh, no, a good word is, I'll just scratch this off, advanced technology. Right? High level of innovation and advanced technology. Normally, if you look at a country that is very innovative, a country that is very technologically sophisticated, countries like Japan, countries like Germany, countries like Israel, uh, very innovative, highly technology-driven country, USA, um, UK, countries like uh, South Korea, right? All of these countries with the few others also, if you take them, you will see one common thing. They are all uh, market-based market economies, more capitalist-driven economies, market-based, market-based. So market, sec market economic system, this, this incentive of profit, self-interest, the freedom of enterprise, freedom of choice is creating this environment where innovation and technology is thriving. Innovation is happening at a very high level and technological advancement is also happening at a very high level. Okay, right. So these are the, uh, basically the uh, advantages. So they are the words are innovation and technology. Innovation and technology. So now we are okay with the advantages, disadvantages of a market economic system. Command economic system. How does it work? We are okay here. Yes, we are done here. Right. Command economic system. First, the advantages. Remember what I said earlier? Advantages of a command economic system. Right, the advantages of a command economic system are based on the disadvantages, right? Disadvantages of a uh, market system, right? I can't see the cursor because of the white background, so I am almost writing in the I'm uh, walking blind here, <laughs> right? <clears throat> So, uh, of a market system, okay, market system. Keep that in mind, that helps. Uh, in a market system, one of the biggest problems in the market economic system is, market economic system is very, very, a market economic system is, with a, remember, very dynamic. What does the word dynamic mean? Is it when something does, doesn't change at all or keeps on changing? When we say dynamic, when we look at something, some situation, uh, sometimes a person and we say, or a, uh, more, uh, we can say a, uh, organization and we say very dynamic. What does that mean? What are we trying to say? When we say dynamic, yes, very good. Keeps changing, keeps on changing. That is the nature no? market economy. The markets are very dynamic. Why? Because the two things that decide price Right, the two things that decide price in a market are basically demand and demand and 
supply. There is nothing more dynamic and nothing more frequently changing than demand and supply. The demand and supply are two of the most dynamic factors. Why? Every, every minute, every moment, our willingness, preference towards a good supported with our purchasing power, that is demand. Uh, producers' willingness to produce a good with the resources they have, that is supply. These things keep on, keep on change. Demand supply factors keep on changing. That's why prices keep on change. And ma market economic system is all about the price mechanism. So if the prices keep on change, market system itself is very dynamic. Sometimes, Buddha, not sometimes, generally, in such a dynamic environment, dynamic situation, it's very difficult to make decisions because things keep changing. Get it? There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of uncertainty in a market economic system that can make it difficult uh, for the decision makers because things keep on changing. Dynamism is good, but dynamism also has certain challenges when it comes to decision making when things keep changing. But in a command economic system, the advantage is, in a command economic system, the advantage is there is a high degree of certainty. So we'll use the word certainty as our keyword. Certainty. Certainty in what? Resource allocation. Remember, price mechanism is a mechanism for resource allocation. Planning system is a mechanism for resource allocation. So earlier we identified price mechanism. Now we are identifying the planning system. So here we go. Economic plans. Economic plans are highly certain. Right? So because of that, there is a certain, uh, there is that the dynamic dynamism and that problem coming through dynamism is not there. Certainty is there. That's an advantage. Uh, remember when we prepare plans, right? We conduct something called an input-output analysis. Uh, maybe just within brackets have that uh, when you list the key points, right? Then allocating resources towards. Remember, I said the, we have written that also. Disadvantages of a market become the advantages. So public good. That's what we did in the first point. Also public goods, right? And then uh, merit goods. So public goods, merit goods in a market system was reasons for inefficiency in resource allocation, market failure, limitation. Here. It's an advantage because the government will allocate resources to produce public goods. Government will allocate enough resources to produce merit goods. Right. Then the ability to eliminate certain inefficiencies, certain inefficiencies due to intense or deficit. So inefficient, eliminate, to remove inefficiency caused by intense competition, meaning too much competition. Deficit competition, meaning not enough competition. Both can be problematic. And the market system can have problems with both. But since the government is the main decision maker uh, in a command economic system, and since the government will make decisions based on common benefits, social welfare, social equity, uh, they can solve the problems caused by uh, intense or deficit levels of competition. Intense or deficit levels of competition. So... Um, through, they, they can solve this through government intervention. Are we clear? Right. So eliminate, the elimination is done by government interfering, government taking over, government saying, no, we'll produce certain goods and services so that the consumers are not exploited, the product is available at a reasonable price. Then because of too much competition, when they see that producers are doing certain unethical things, they are cheating the consumer, they are using inferior and harmful materials to produce goods and services just to face the competition, then what will happen? Uh, government will interfere and solve those problems, right? So that advantage is there. In a market economy, government was laissez-faire, hands-off, very limited intervention was there, right? Then um, making resource allocation decisions motivated by the incentive of, so what is the incentive earlier in a market system? The incentive was um, uh, basically uh, self-interest profit maximization. So we said uh, that who can get exploited? Consumers can get exploited, right? Because profits is profits makes uh, private sector producers greedy. So they will try to exploit the consumer. 
But here, the decision making is based on common benefit. And there will, there will not be exploitation uh, of any party in a market economic, sorry, in a command economic system, common benefit or social equity. Now, that's why the, uh, because the private sector was so focused on profits, they didn't want to produce public goods. They didn't want to produce merit goods too much. They were focused on demerit goods. They were overproducing to earn more profits. Get it? They were trying to create monopolies and exploit the consumer. All these problems were there because the incentive is profit self-interest. But now when the incentive is common benefit and social equity, automatically the general public, the consumers are protected. Okay? Everyone is in an equal situation much as possible in a command economic system. Finally, implementing measures to minimize disparities in income and wealth distribution. Income wealth disparities are minimized. Remember, one of the three reasons of market failure is what? One of the three reasons of market failure is inefficiency in resource allocation was the first reason, broad reason. First, I. Second, I was inequality. So now, Government is solving that. That's an advantage in a command economy. Third, I was instability. That was talked about in the first point. Certainty. No, no instability. Certainty is created. Okay? Right. So, the three broad limitations of a... Uh, three broad limitations of a... Uh, market economic system we have touched on when we talked about the advantages. Okay? The key, key terms are there. Uh, bring them to your short note list and just keep trying in your mind to connect the words and come up with the complete point. That's the uh, retrieval technique we will use. Okay, any questions up to now? So we'll finish this area now with the disadvantages of a command economic system. Okay, if you guys want to clarify anything, you can ask. What are the disadvantages of a command economic system? Remember, the disadvantages of a command will mostly be based on what? The advantages of a market system. Advantages of a market system, right? Uh, I'm sorry for the clarity of handwriting there, Buddha, because I can't see the cursor. It's a bit uh, difficult. We'll, we'll uh, change the background color and everything by next session. Okay? Right. Um, of the virtual whiteboard. Uh, disadvantages. Major difficulties and resulting inefficiencies in the process of coordinating complicated economic plans prepared by the planning authority. Complicated economic plans. Now, we looked at we looked at uh, the dynamic nature. We looked at the dynamic nature of a market economic system as a disadvantage. Yes, but at the same time, we said um, a market economic system has a lot of flexibility. Remember, we said as a mechanism of resource allocation, relatively efficient. Why is that? Because price keeps getting updated on a real-time basis, right? When price keeps getting updated on a real-time basis, the information you get from price to make the production, consumption, factor, allocation, decisions, the information you need Buddha, is very updated, new information. But here, how do, we, how do we prepare this whole thing? How do we do this whole thing in the command economy? We prepare what we call comprehensive economic plans and policies uh, by conducting an input-output analysis. We'll say... Right? Just quickly understand this. It's a very logical point. We'll say in, um, uh, in 2023, we decide to prepare uh, a medium term and a long term economic plan. Medium term and a long term economic plan. Medium term economic plan for five years. So from 2023, we prepare a plan that goes up to five years, 2028. Five year plan. Then we want to prepare a long term plan, right? 10 year plan also. We want to prepare a 
10 year plan as well. The 10 year plan goes from 2028, oh, sorry, 2023. Sorry. Uh, okay, so this is the five year plan, right? And then uh, from 2023, we go to 2033. That is the 10 year plan. Get it? So the five year plan and the 10 year plan we have prepared. Five year plan and the 10 year plan we have prepared. Now, see, Buddha, this five year plan and the 10 year plan is prepared in 2023. Yes. So the information used for this five year or 10 year plan is from the year 2023. In 2023, we conduct our input output analysis. Get it? Input output analysis is conducted in 2023. Whatever the information we find in 2023 and we are preparing a plan that has an impact on the economy up to 2028 for the five-year plan and up to 2033, the 10-year plan. Inefficient. Why? Because the economy is dynamic. Things will keep changing. Now, in the year 2020 or in the year uh, yeah, in the year 2017 in the year 2017 right did anyone predict five years back did anyone predict or did anyone know that by 2020 we will have something called the pandemic by 22, the Sri Lankan economy will go into its worst economic crisis since independence. Did we know this information? No. So in 2017, if we had prepared a plan, five-year plan up to 2022 and another 10-year plan up to 2027, right? And if we just keep blindly implementing that plan, all the decisions we are making based on what? Irrelevant, outdated, incorrect information. So that is why we say planning mechanism will be inefficient. It will not coordinate resources because the decisions are too complicated and there will be overall inefficiency in resource allocation. And that's why we say the more real-time updated price mechanism is more efficient as a mechanism of resource allocation. Did you guys understand the point I was making? Very quickly, I want a response. The price mechanism, we make decisions based on the prices that are available now. That is based on demand and supply today, now, at that moment. Not outdated. Get it? Are we there? Are we okay? <laughs> yes, right? You guys are clear. If you don't understand, Puta, please ask, right? Don't hesitate. Don't think uh, you're troubling me or I will get annoyed or no. Just ask. I'll explain. Okay? Any doubt you have, you can ask. But basic point, uh, you should let me know when you are okay. Yes? <clears throat> can a few more of you guys respond? Are we okay? Why planning is inefficient and price mechanism is efficient? Main reason is to make decisions, we need information. The information we get from the price mechanism is much more updated, real-time information. But the information we use to prepare the economic plans are from a uh, input-output analysis. We use or we conduct and the information from the time where the plan is prepared. But after five years or ten years, the situation could have changed. So the plan becomes outdated. So the information is outdated. Right. So let's uh, highlight this quickly. Right. Um, major difficulties uh, and resulting, I'll, I'll use this term, inefficiencies, process of coordination, process of coordinating economic plans. Right? Or the simple word is uh, basically inefficiencies. Simple term is inefficiencies. Okay, that's a simple thing to use, inefficiencies. Are we okay? Right. Then, uh, next. Okay, uh, quality aspect of output. Quality aspect of output is 
given inadequate yes there's a question it's lagging ah okay mm. is anyone else having the problem is my voice lagging no okay mm. right we'll give it a few seconds for that and see i think it will improve because i haven't got a message saying that there is a uh connectivity issue right so we'll see uh just give it a few seconds and see right um quality aspect of output is given inadequate consideration quality aspect is given inadequate consideration there is relatively low quality of life so that's a simple point no? relatively low quality of life okay quality of life is low low quality of life because in a in a in a uh, command economy buddha the focus is on trying to produce much as possible of a particular good or service some basic product that can satisfy you now for any any need there are many wants no now if we think about food all of us need food every country needs to produce food but then uh, there are different uh, quality of food the nutritional quality the 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 ingredient quality the the richness of the food you know it's there so in a market economy people with more purchasing power will want high quality highly nutritious super food they will want super food meaning highly nutritious food and very rich and all that they will need food right very tasty very exclusive you know all that food then in a market you know people with less purchasing power they will want some some affordable food then things like that right that's okay uh so in a market system they will allocate resources for both kind of food then they will do it but of obviously in a market system there might be some people who don't have much purchasing power who do not have purchasing power they might go without food also that possibility is there but in a command system the point is no everyone should get food so if everyone is to get food we can't produce you know luxury food then uh, average food then uh, low quality food then we can't have all that what we can do is just have one type of food item or few types of food item very basic thing that will satisfy the hunger that is that will be a food good enough right basic nutrition you will get right so and that, that particular average quality food item we will produce a lot right there was an analogy that i used with you guys that is about making the cake uh, so cake is the goods and services produced uh, in a in a command economy the cake will be a very basic butter cake why because that is the cheapest to make end of the day it is also a cake and that that cake made in a command economy buta will be almost like bread and it will be flat as a roti roti or something right why do we why do they do it that way so that they can make enough of the cake a big enough cake to put cake in everyone's mouth understood to give the basic food to everyone so the quality goes down focus is not on the quality focus is on the quantity focus is on the what quantity basic quality but focus is on the quantity whether it's food or anything the limited resources in a command economy will always be allocated keeping quantity in mind and to satisfy the basic needs in mind so the overall quality of life overall the quality of the goods and services will be average or uh, below average okay limitation lack of powerful incentive lack of powerful incentive lack of powerful efficient incentive but the so rapid economic growth will not happen so economic growth will be limited you can simply say economic growth will be limited why because there is no powerful incentive within a market economic system there is no powerful incentive within a market economic system sorry within a command economic system such as in a market economic system in a market economic system there is always a very powerful incentive you will find right that is self interest profits you know to earn more profits will be efficient and economy will grow output will increase um let me give a quick example now we'll say 
uh, if you're working, your boss comes to you and says, uh, your boss comes to you and says, uh, why don't you uh, work two hours? No, you're normally working from nine to five. We'll say you're working from nine to five. Your boss comes to you and says, um, work for two hours more. That is from five to seven. Work for two hours more. Would you do it? Would you work? Yes or no? Um, you will say, um, okay, uh, fine, I'll work for two hours more. Uh, how much extra am I going to be paid? That's called overtime. What time? Overtime payment. Then your boss says, no overtime. You're not going to get anything, any benefit for you. No self-interest for you. No self-benefit. Uh, that extra two hours is for the country. Extra two hours is for the country. Common benefit for everyone. Everyone's benefit for the country. Would you work? I want a response. Yes or no? Hmm. Okay, most of you guys seem to say uh, no. So does that mean you all are not patriotic? Do we have a patriotism crisis now with your generation? No? For your country, you wouldn't work for two hours more? I think you have given an honest response. If it was me, maybe Puta, for one day, maybe for a week, I would work that two hours. But on a continuous basis, would I work? Every day, five days of the week, I don't think I will work. Because I will not, that, that motivation, that incentive, common benefit for the country, get it? That incentive is not as attractive, not as powerful as self-interest or profits. Do you agree? Benefit for oneself. I can earn more income. I can earn more profit. Is a much more powerful incentive than when I work two hours more, my countrymen and women will benefit. My, my fellow Sri Lankans will benefit. That will motivate you. But Puta, that's not going to motivate you on a continuous basis. That motivation will diminish. Understood? So, uh, it's very difficult to get people to be motivated by common benefit. Social equity. Because self-interest is the powerful motivator for human beings. Uh, that's why but in a command economic system, the government will have to use a lot of coercive incentives. Coercive, forced incentives. That's why in any country that is having a command economic system, you will find very strong, strict rules and regulations. Governments are seen as almost dictatorial. Like dictators, they will have very strict. In China, very strict rules. In China, now we have come out of the pandemic and we have had a, the world has come out of the pandemic and there was a football World Cup with hundreds of thousands of people packed into stadiums and watching football matches, screaming at the top of their lungs, no, what mask? No mask. <laughs> yes or no? Right? We, we had that last month in December. All the while, you guys know in China, there were whole areas, thousands of people were under lockdown for three, four, five, six months. Still, even now there is a lockdown in China in certain parts because of the pandemic. So when the rest of the world is out and about and free, Chinese people are undergoing that. Why can't they also be free? Why can't they do, why don't they have that? freedom of choice and do whatever they want based on their self-interest. They can't because it's a command economy. Government has very strict rules and regulations, coercive incentives, strict punishments for breaking the rules. North Korea, coercive. It force people to think about the what benefit, common benefit and do everything you do. Yes, the vehicle you buy, if you can only buy a vehicle, if everyone else is also able to afford a vehicle, then it's a very basic vehicle, ugly looking vehicle, box on wheels vehicle, right? Can't help. That's common benefit. But there's a rule and that forces you to do that. Is that clear? 
right? So we are looking at that as a disadvantage uh, that comes into the next and the final point also. Overall, when you live in a command economy, you have very limited choice. You have very limited choice. You don't have the freedom of choice and freedom of enterprise as consumers uh, and producers. Okay, limited choice, uh, free, sorry, limited choice, freedom, I don't have the word here, no, limited choice and freedom for consumers, limited choice and freedom for consumers, production is anyway done by the government, it's government enterprise, um, especially situations where the distribution is based on direct government intervention such as rationing system, that's another word to capture. Rationing system. Now, your grandparents might talk about this. They might remember this in the 1970s in Sri Lanka when they were very young. Uh, they would have also sometimes stood in these what we call uh, uh, the different queues for bread, for wheat flour, for certain fabrics and things like that. For everything, there were queues, especially the things we import from other countries because the government was restricting imports. And uh, only a small quantity is imported and it's distributed among uh, everyone as much as possible in a fair or equal manner. Even if you have more money, even if you have a higher purchasing power, you can't buy more because you, have to leave, you can only buy a small quantity because the government is trying to give it to everyone. Social equity. Right? With situations of rationing systems, social equity being a very important objective, uh, you can't, um, you know, uh, choose the things you buy. You can't choose the job you do. You can't choose the lifestyle you want uh, in a command economic system because you have to sacrifice certain things for the benefit of everyone, common good. Okay, so we see that as a limitation. We saw this as an advantage, the incentive being social equity, common benefit as an advantage. Now we are seeing the same thing as what? Limitation. Are we clear? Right. Any questions? Now we have all the words, all the, the knowledge is there. Right. Make sure you prepare a, a good set of short notes. When you prepare short notes, for the, before you write down, just, just before you just keep writing these words that are highlighted, just read it once and try to see, okay, what is the point here? Why, why are these words there and how do I put them in my list? You can go comma, comma, comma. Or you can say, okay, inefficiency, process of um, inefficiency could be the point. Under that, you can quickly write uh, coordination, meaning, remember, mechanism of resource allocation, right? And the uh, planning mechanism and resource allocation could be the next two points. Inefficiency. Then you know the key, right? What I'm trying to say here is then, or you know, you're thinking, what I'm trying to say here is the point is uh, resource allocation becomes inefficient when we use the planning mechanism, when we use economic plans. Get it? So that way, that kind of a logical way, if you can prepare your notes, I think you're okay. Now, some of you might feel this is printed and given. I have highlighted the keyword. Right? I'll just make this point. Anyone thinking like this? Um, the tute is there, everything is printed and given. Then sir is explaining, we are also, after understanding, underlining the keywords. <clears throat> then why is this person asking me to take another book or whatever it is and list these keywords in some logical order, number them and all that? Why? that not that a waste of time and effort? It's fair if any one of you guys are thinking like that. Why should we do this? You know, what's the point of Short notes, especially for things that are already there and I have highlighted, I can just take my notebook, the, the, the note, right, the study material itself, and I can um, just read it once or twice because the words are already highlighted. Why should I put it into another list? Why should I prepare it, make it into another summarized note? But, uh, uh, I'll explain this part a bit later. There's a big difference between studying and learning. Okay. Learning has two parts. First part of learning is capturing the knowledge or being exposed to the knowledge. 
capture of knowledge. How do you capture knowledge? How do you gather knowledge? For you guys, virtual classes, what we are doing now is where you are capturing knowledge. By reading your notes and tutes, you are capturing knowledge. Are we clear? That's how we capture knowledge. You listen to lectures. You read things. Get it? You capture knowledge. That is first part of learning. You know what the second part of learning? This is not me, okay? This is educational science. Educational psychology 101. <laughs> what is the second part of learning? First part is capture, capturing knowledge. What is the second part of learning? What we can broadly call education. What is the second part? Anyone? Second part is study, studying. Studying and learning are not the same. That's why earlier, if you remember, I said at one point during today's session, I can't study for you. I can teach. I can make sure you learn. But the studying part has to be done by whom? You guys. Only if you capture knowledge and then study the knowledge, what is completed, what the circle called what is completed, the circle called learning, if you want to complete it, right? Otherwise, it will be half a circle. It will be open. If you want to complete this, right? Comprehensive learning is capture the knowledge and study the knowledge. When it comes to studying, we use certain techniques for studying. Scientific. Later on, on another day, I'll find some time. We'll do this soon, right? Because this, I want to introduce this full program to you. First step is that short note thing, memory program. The first step is the short note thing, right? Um, uh, in, a, in a simple way, summarized way, uh, there are many, many study techniques. There are a lot of research papers. Scientific, this is. I'm not just... I didn't wake up one day in the morning and just thought of something and I'm not telling you things that I saw in a dream or something. Scientific. There are research papers. I will sh share those some of the best research papers in the world about study techniques. And in all of those study techniques, Buddha, the studying method, study technique, study technique that is found to be the least effective, that is found to be the least effective in terms of memory, in terms of uh, performance in exams, the least effective study technique is called re-reading. I'll repeat. What reading? Re-reading. What is re-reading? Re-reading. The traditional thing. What is it called? Yes or no? We sit down. Take, you know, multicolored, uh, you know, highlighters and pens and rulers and things. We sit down like you see on the screen. We read the point that we uh, had taken as a note or printed and we highlight. That is the process called rereading. Good. You feel like you're doing something. But research has shown it is the least effective study technique. That's why I asked you guys, maybe if you are thinking, why should I write short notes when I already have it? Can't I just read it once or twice, once in a while? Isn't that enough? Science says otherwise. <laughs> okay? And one of the most effective study techniques is a thing I am asking you to do and develop as a habit. What is that? No? Anyone? What do you think I asked you to do? No? I, yo. Prepare what? Yes, the short notes. Yes, that is in research they have found that is one of the most effective study techniques. The, the most effective study technique is called retrieval, active retrieval. So I am, I have come up with a method where once you prepare short notes in a certain way, good short notes, where you number things, 
we can connect the most effective study technique with short notes that is called active retrieval. So active retrieval based or active retrieval uh, driven short notes is what we are preparing. I'll complete everything. I'll share the whole thing with you in the next few steps, right? But uh, scientific, proven with research. Okay? Right. Um, so do that. For now, prepare the short notes. And now, <laughs> right, let's start mixed economic system, page number 50. I want you guys to quickly write down the characteristics. Remember, these are the ones you have to write down. Uh, last three characteristics of a mixed economic system are given, printed and given. So quickly write this. Space should be enough. Right, quickly write this, I'll explain. Okay, how are we doing? Um, while you guys are completing this, Uta, let me just give you a uh, overall understanding. Then I think we are okay, right? Uh, first thing is uh, a mixed economic system is obviously a combination of a market and a command economic system. So the mix is in terms of the two sectors, private sector, public sector. Mixes in terms of the ownership of uh, resources or factors, um, property resources. The mixes in terms of the mechanisms also, right? Uh, price mechanism, planning mechanism. The mixes in terms of um, the uh, incentives, the objectives of each of these parties, private sector and the public sector. So when these elements mix and we create an economic system such an economic system is known as a mixed economic system now if you take a uh, okay i'll uh, do it this way uh, now 
if you take a, like a market economic system right in a market economic system uh, in a market economic system we have um, right in a market economic system we have consumers are there market economic uh, system we have uh, consumers are there okay in a market economic system we have producers and we have factor owners three parties but in a market economic system government is laissez faire we don't talk about the government as a uh, important economic agent or a party in a market system in a command economic system we have you know if it's a command economic system right we have uh, consumers are there okay producers we don't talk about we talk about the government right government is the producer come on government and uh, we don't say factor owners we only have uh, labor units why only labor units because the land and capital is owned by the government entrepreneurship is provided by the government land capital entrepreneurship is government only only thing remaining is the labor so we don't need to say factor owners labor units and we don't talk about producers meaning private sector doesn't do anything much in a command economy then so can you see in a, in a command economy we have consumers government and labor units in a market economy we have consumers producers and factor owners so in both of those economies one of these is left out but in a mixed economic system we have all four we have consumers we have producers we have factor owners and we have the government as well mixed economic system done right so when you take this for the short note you just need to remember uh, four economic operators four parties are there numbers are key four and recall the four make a note of the four consumer producer factor owner government four parties right then consumers producers and factor owners is in about this you don't it's very simple there is a private remember i said there is a private sector and a uh, public sector private sector the incentive is self interest public sector the incentive is social well being benefit or equity uh, next two points are we okay i'm not going to highlight but you guys get what i'm saying so private sector you should know who are the parties that fall into the private sector three parties consumers producers factor owners private sector and they always work based on make decisions based on self interest self interest then public sector or the government is there they make their incentive is the incentive is social well being or benefit social equity all those things done done good for you then uh, the fourth point uh, that you can see on the virtual whiteboard now the private sector and the public sector shall independently own production resources meaning there is private property and there is public property both are there private sector owns resource property resources public sector also owns property resources there is government land and capital there is uh, private sector land and capital independently separated they own so property rights uh, property ownership is both private property and public property private property and public property simple okay then these are printed and given you can see them in page number 50 Uh, economic activities of the private sector are directed by remember both mechanisms i said will be used economic activities of the private sector price mechanism and in competitive markets competitive markets price mechanism if you are trying to underline something private sector price mechanism price mechanism is always but in a market no competitive market right private sector will use price mechanism public sector will use planning mechanism very simple public sector will because both private sector and public sector need to have a mechanism of resource allocation otherwise you can't solve the basic economic problems so private sector will use price mechanism public sector will use planning mechanism right simple as that finally there is a high degree of freedom remember freedom of choice freedom of enterprise private sector will have but that freedom of choice freedom of enterprise will not be there uh when act government does certain activities and whenever there is a problem market failure whenever there is a what market failure private sector has a issue with their uh or private sector is inefficient in the way they allocate resources 
right? If there is a inefficiency in resource allocation, uh, if there is, um, uh, we'll say, macroeconomic inequality, instability, then we will see what intervention, government market intervention. Remember, uh, most of the features, most of the operations within the way, the way in which a mixed economy operates is very, very, very similar to a market economic system. The way a mixed economy operates with a, is very similar to a market economic system. But the key difference is in a mixed economic system, government plays a very prominent, very active role. Government is also one of the four economic operators and the government will practice market interventions in a much bigger way than in a market economic system. Is that clear? Otherwise, a mixed economy, most of the operations are similar to a market economic system. The biggest difference is government is one of the four key economic operators and the government will have a lot of interventions in the market. That's a mixed economic system. And most countries in the world today are using some kind of a mixed model. So these features are relevant. Any questions? So I expect you guys to make sure you have prepared the short note covering all of these things. Okay. So I want to go quickly go through the next two slides. But before I do that, I need to give a fair warning that uh, in my area where I'm living at the moment or uh, where I am at the moment, uh, the power cut is supposed to be around 5 o'clock. Now it's 5.03. So Buddha, I will take a few more minutes. But the class might all of a sudden stop uh, if the power goes off. So don't worry. We have covered the work we wanted to cover, but I'm trying to do a bit, few more minutes and quickly cover a few more things and we'll conclude. Okay? Right. Uh, so in case all of a sudden the power goes off, let me uh, again remind you that we have started a very important academic year for you guys. So today was the first class. And please make sure Buta, you uh, follow those uh, study habits, uh, the memory program I'm introducing. Do your part, do your work. Plus, please have the ambition, the vision uh, to make this year a really good year for you in terms of your advanced levels. Uh, learn everything, study a lot, and uh, keep up this uh, very positive uh, attitude you have towards your uh, exam and studies. I think we will, I'm confident we will do really well. Okay. So with that message, let me just give a small explanation uh, about the next two slides, then we'll conclude. Okay. Are we okay with that? Yes. Right. Uh, types of mixed economies. There are three main types of mixed economies uh, that we have to learn about. One of them we have already touched on, Buddha. We did that under dimensions of planning, indicative planning, we covered. The other two are social and socialist. Uh, I've given a really summarized but a very good note here about social market economy, socialist market economy. The main difference is social market economy is a more capitalist based, uh, market based economy, but they see some big problem with their highly liberal, highly capitalist method they follow, they see a problem with it. Because a very liberal market economy uh, has a lot of private sector freedom. And because of this high level of private sector freedom um, in countries like USA, you see this very high private sector freedom is there. Because of that, there is a social inequality, social injustice is there. Because of that, there is no certain social welfare, social benefit for people who deserve it. It's not given. So countries like Germany, Denmark, Norway, Switzerland, these kind of countries, New Zealand, these kinds of countries, see this as a problem. So they say, no, we, we value a market economy. We want a market economy. We want to be a capitalist country, but we also want to focus a bit more on social equity, social well-being, which is very unusual for a capitalist country, but they want to focus on it. They say only then our people will have a truly um, high living standard, a proper living standard. We have to treat our, our citizens equally. So they have created a new economic model, a mixed economic model called the 
social market economy. The word social, even though this is a market economy, we use the word social because of that focus on social equity and social well-being. And they are very focused on five types of human rights, five types of human rights, right? When we go through this in detail, there's a detailed note I have given, Buddha, in your study material, right? In the reading area, when you go, when we'll quickly go through that also next week, then uh, we should be okay, okay? So, by the way, this is the last part of economic systems. Uh, next week, we are starting how we solve basic economic problems. Then when it comes to a socialist market economy, it's basically a socialist country. Socialist country, right? A command kind of an economy, but they are allowing the market system, some of their industries, some of their goods, some of their markets, they are giving some opportunity for the private sector market system. They are okay with it, but still the dominant powerful party in the economy is the government. And uh, there is, it, they are not a capitalist or market economy. They are a command economy, more socialist country, but they are using markets a bit. So we say socialist market economy. Countries, examples are countries like China, Russia, right? These are good examples for countries which are socialist market economy. So very different. They don't fall in the same uh, place. When you look at uh, command economy and market economy on either side, uh, very different. Social Socialist is more on the command economy side. Social market economy is more on the market economy side. Market economy side. Right. Go through the points. You should be okay. Um, this we went through. How the mixed economies can be created. Because we talked about a mixed economy. I thought of just uh, sharing the slides again with you. All of this is there in your study material. In the reading exercises area. Right. So next week we start with basic economic problems. With that, I will conclude the session for the day. Okay. So let me stop the recording also. And uh...